Welcome back. Next, we want to look at uh, testing and troubleshooting IPv4 and IPv6 on our OpenSUSE install. So here, here we go. I chose to go with, with the network manager here. And uh, let's just take a look. Okay. So again, remember, I could do everything here except for assigning the host name. And we're going to do some command prompt work. And so I'll show you how to do that from the command prompt in addition to how we looked at doing it in Wicked and in, uh, in Yast. Okay. All right. That looks good. There are two different types of command prompts available in, uh, in OpenSUSE. We've got right off of the, the favorites here, we've got console. And to make it bigger, it's control plus. So I make it a little bit bigger. There's also a um, another one where it is uh, elevated. In other words, you just start out with a, let's see if I can find it here. It's got a red icon where you start out with, uh, with it being elevated. Here it is. So it's terminal super user. Okay. And again, the same thing, control, and then the plus key will make that a lot bigger. I'm going to go ahead and just use the standard prompt, and that way we'll be aware of when we need to elevate. Okay. All right. There are uh, a number of commands that uh, we're going to take a look at. They're all in that text document. Let me just bring them up here for you. So that's that page. If we go here, we want to look at these. Okay. These commands here. These uh, IP, IP, whatever, those are all part of the same family. So we want to take a look at those. We want to take a look at how ping is used, IP route, NS lookup, switching to super user. These are both the same, super user or sudo, and then trace route, trace route six. Wicked only works if you switched over to Wicked in Yast. So again, these are all, all these commands are in that uh, text document. Of course, you could pause the video and look at them here as well. All right, so let's go back over and uh, let's get started with this. You know, one of the things that we often do, we just kind of take a bold step. You've you've configured IP addressing and and you just sort of want to take a like a you know a bold step and see if you, if you got it right. Is what what I do is I just do a, a ping, ftp.nobel.com. It's just habit. Now I'll tell you that this didn't work a minute ago. I had to troubleshoot it, and you may have to troubleshoot it as well. That's part of what we do, and you just got to take your drawing, sit back, think it through. You know, in my case, uh, I had the wrong IP address for the default gateway. I had, I had uh, 172.18.1.1 instead of 172.18.18.1 for me. Uh, and and so troubleshooting with this is having the tools, being able to systematically, you know, what can I do, what can't I do? Start small or start local, work your way out. We do a lot of troubleshooting. It's primarily what we do. Now, one thing that's different about using the ping command in Linux and is that you gotta interrupt it. It'll just keep going forever, as you can see here. And it's C-L-E-A-R in order to clear the screen. Okay, let's, let's just be bold again and go for ping IPv6 dot, uh, who is that we're doing? Is it Amazon? Amazon.com. Oh, it's Google.com. Thank you. There we go. Okay. And it, we're, we're doing good. Now, again, I, I tested this before I started the video, and it may not be good, so we got to troubleshoot it. Okay. Let's take a look at some of the commands in our list. It used to be that we would use ifconfig. We, we say that. I still say that in... Uh, from time to time, and ifconfig I is as is uh, is pretty much gone. The new command is ipaddr, and it does have a, an abbreviation, so it's ipaddr. I, I like the color of uh, of the Bash console here. I, I like that it colors. Now it's not you know formatted really great, and so you kind of got to come in here and look for stuff. Okay, yeah, you got to do that. Okay, but it's there. We can do a little bit different presentation on that by doing an IP BR and then ADDR. That gives us a little bit of presentation. 
This uh, IPADDR can be abbreviated to just IPA. Linux does this all the time. They, they just shorten stuff up. If we want to look at just IPv6, it would be IP-6A. And we get just that. If we want to look at 4, IP-4A. If we wanted to do IPv6 with the, the BR command, that would be IP-BR-6A. And that gives us that condensed version. Okay. Now ping we already looked at. So we've got ping and, and we did. You can also specify putting a six right there and we've got that'll ping IPv6. You can also do a hyphen six and that'll ping IPv6 and uh, just ping is uh, defaults to IPv4 uh, and you can add a hyphen four if you wish to. Okay. IP route. Okay. So what are we looking for there? Well, that's IPv4. It's telling us what our default gateway is. Default via, okay. I don't have a note on if there's one of those for six. I'll just try it here and just see if we get anything out of that. Nope. So I'd have to look that one up. Okay, NS lookup is still NS lookup. Okay. Notice the prompt change. Now, Windows would tell us the server it was talking to, and, and this doesn't. It just changes the prompt, and then we can ask it things like, you know, ftp.novell.com. Now, we're over on, on, now it tells us the server. We are over on, on DevNet, and so this is really good. It means we're going through, uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't do any trace routing. It's coming up. We're going through, um, you know, RTR, and, and this, this, is, this is good stuff. Okay, so in, uh, NSLOOKUP is still NSLOOKUP. There is another command, I forget what it is, that, that's uh, showing up more and more in the Linux world. It's, I think it's dump. Anyways, so NSLOOKUP works good. We can use that to check check DNS and then exit and, and again, clear. Okay, I already mentioned to you the SU command and SUDO. Uh, some operating systems, Linux operating systems, will support both. Some will support just one or the other. And let's let's talk about uh, taking a doing the uh, host, uh, setting the your host name from a command prompt. The host name is found in a file. the The cat command is a display command. It's concatenate or catalog, and it's Etsy host name. This is the file where the host name resides. Okay, so cat, cat is a tool to do that. If you want to edit it, the built-in editor is an editor called VI. You know, you know, Windows has Notepad, Linux has VI. VI is pretty clunky, and uh, it's been around for a very, very long time. I, I mean, I remember using it 30 years ago, but it is not very intuitive. If you use it a lot, okay, yeah, sure, you get used to the command. So the editor that that that's built into OpenSUSE that is better. Uh, is called nano. Nano has become pretty popular. So if I say nano forward slash, that's a directory at C forward slash host, uh, host name uh, is the name of the file. And these again are case sensitive. Then notice what it did here for me is it opened the nano editor and uh, nano's got some helps down here, but it's telling me that my file is not writable. Okay. Let's fix that. So I do a control X. And so what I do is I say, okay, it's not letting me write to it because I don't have privileges. So I do SU and then nano forward slash Etsy forward slash host name. Oh, okay, let's try this. SU, okay, sorry. Uh, and some distributions, maybe it's sued. I, I, anyways, I, I won't uh, figure that out with you, but. Um, I was trying to put it all in the command line. And so what it was interpreting was nano was as a user. So what I'm just doing is I'm just doing a switch user and now it's asking me for a password. Okay, and now notice the prompt changed. And that's just a reminder that, that I'm, uh, you know, red, caution, right? I'm in super user mode. So anything I could do here could be, could be dangerous. And now I, I could say nano, <clears throat> Etsy hostname. 
okay. And notice that, that I no longer have that, that warning and I can go up there and I can uh, add my host name or change my host name. And then when I'm done down here, I can, I can write it and, and exit. And so this editor is a little better. There's another editor that I also like called gedit, but gedit isn't installed by default. So I think, well, how would we do that then? Well, what we would do is we would go into Yast and we would go into software and we would install gedit. And then from here, we could say gedit. Gedit is fully graphical. It has, you know, menus and the whole bit, but um, nano, nano is pretty good. Nano's, nano is much easier than VI. For VI, I, it's like I have to have a cheat sheet that has me has all the VI instructions. Okay, we're almost done here. To get out of super user mode, I just exit takes me back. And let's do some trace routing. T-R-A-C-E, trace route. Okay. <clears throat> I got to play around a little bit. I'm letting you see my mistakes here. Okay, I, I paused the video and just play with it a little bit. Um, I, I went too quickly. What it's saying here is that it has an absolute path. Okay, I, I get that. The, what it's saying is that the utility is in the SBIN directory. So running it may require supervisor, su supervisor privileges. So we have a choice there. We could we can SU or I could have done it under SU. It's better to do it this way. This is how we learn is by making mistakes. So I'm going to switch user. Okay, and I got my, my prompt here. Now you might be wondering why would traceroute require super user privileges? I, I'm not sure. It does spell out completely trace R-O-U-T-E as opposed to Windows. And then let's try it. IPv6. Dot google.com okay it goes much faster than windows trace route okay so we have trace route which you can give it a, a, an ipv4 or an ipv6 destination let's just do it again here trace route let's do an ipv4 destination okay went off the screen here all right Control C to interrupt it. Okay, or we could actually say if a if a destination has both an IPv4 and IPv6 address, we could actually say trace and then put a six on the end of it. All right, uh, just uh, let's just review then for a minute. So in, in this video and the one before, they're kind of a package. What we did was we we looked at how to set the uh, IPv4 and IPv6, okay, so you can do it here, configure. We looked how to, how to set those, and we talked about there's things here that we don't normally see in Windows, and so we just went, went through to the IPv4 and IPv6 tab. We talked about if you have multiple DNS servers, how you could add those, and so on. And this is the net, network manager. We also went into YAST, and we took a look at, at uh, doing it in YAST. Okay. And we said that it's under under system, under network settings, but you have a choice. You can either use network manager down on in the notification area, or you can switch over and use uh, the one built into YAS, which is called the Wicked service. And you can switch between the two. Okay. So in other words, if I okay this, I'll just go ahead and okay it. It's now switching over to using, uh, using Wicked and and I think I showed you this before, all the boxes are full, right? So we have our, our PDF file, which tells us uh, our settings. And then we have all these commands that we've played with. And let's just be sure that we covered all the bases with them. So what would we normally do in Windows? Well, we, we uh, the IPA or IPADDR, same thing. It gave us a, a display of uh, IP address information. Now, I, IP config in Windows gave us more. And so we didn't get everything there that we wanted. And, but we've got variations of that. We looked at ping and very similar to Windows. In Windows, we would do a route print. Here we did an IP route. There, there's more that could be done there. I don't know if we need to do more, but there's more that could be done to look at more routing information. 
And this lookup was the same. It, it lets us talk to the DNS server. We looked at, uh, at switching user and uh, the sudo. Uh, some Linux distributions prefer this. If, okay, between the two, they're, they're roughly the same command. We looked at all the different trace routes and we said that wicked show all, but that only works if you switched over yes to use wicked. So if we miss something, let me know and we'll go back and look at it. This is the heart of, of us working with Linux is being able to, to troubleshoot and to you know, to, to get it communicating. And we want it to be healthy. We have the advantage of, of snapshotting it in, in VMware. All right, I think we're good. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll quit on the video. And, and so this is, is our goal this week is, is install, uh, uh, getting it updated, getting open VM tools, which was already there, getting familiar with, with the menu structure. How do we shut it down? How do we elevate? How do we get, uh, we don't call it a command prompt, they call it a console. How do we set wallpaper? How do we, you know, do the timeout screen, lock screen? Kind of the fundamentals of kicking around. We didn't look at the file system. Dolphin is the file manager. There's there's a couple of them that are real popular, but Dolphin's been around for a long time. And and so we've got our file manager. We didn't, you know, we didn't look at things that might be personal. I, I like to install Dropbox so that I can get files in and out of, uh, of the virtual pretty easily. Uh, okay, we haven't connected from it to a Windows host yet. These things we'll be looking at in next week as time allows. And then updates. I, I'm expecting that in a day or so when we come back in here to look, we'll have an icon down here telling us that there are, are updates that need to be installed. All right, I hope your comfort level is good. And I've intentionally not uh, not tried to, to put too much on our plate this week. I'll be doing the assignment for this here uh, next. And, and I, I believe I'm just going to be looking for like one screenshot. I believe I'm just going to be looking for a trace route, a trace route screenshot, something like this. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you for a lot. Uh, you're, you know, you're almost to graduation and I, I hope you can see the value of getting some keyboard time with Linux as part of your career prep. And uh, so not a lot of screenshots there. Okay. Thank you for your time. And uh, I hope that you enjoy Linux as much as I do. And I hope the videos were helpful. And I'll watch for questions for you by email. Alrighty.